Now let us compose our minds. Concentrate on the offerings that you place on the altar as I read the significance of the offerings. Offering of lights. May we offer these candles burning brightly out of deep respect and veneration to our enlightened master, the Buddha. May these lights symbolically guide us to the light of the Dharma, which dispels the darkness of greed with the light of generosity, the gloominess of hatred with the light of love, and the darkness of ignorance with the light of wisdom through the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. Offering of Jostics and Incense May we offer these Jostics and Incense out of deep respect and veneration to our blessed teacher, the Buddha. May our good deeds be like the fragrance of these Jostics, cultivating compassion, patience, tolerance, understanding and love towards all living beings. Offering of water. This clean, clear water that we place on the altar, may it remind us to cultivate the virtues of calmness, clarity and purity. Let it remind us to diligently cleanse ourselves of our spiritual defilements and delusions through the cultivation of generosity, compassion, and wisdom. Offering of flowers. These flowers too we offer out of deep respect and gratitude to our compassionate teacher, the Buddha. These flowers, sweet, beautiful, and choice, are clustered at the feet of our noble master. Beautiful as they are now, they will soon, with the passing of time, wilt and fade and be cast away. Reflecting thus on this very nature of unsatisfactoriness, impermanence and soullessness, let us tread the path shown by the Buddha for the eradication of suffering here and now. Now let us begin the Sunday Pujas, Puja chanting by first saying sadhu three times as a mark of homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddham saranam gachami Dhammam saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Dutiyam pi buddham saranam gachami Dutiyam pidamang saranam gachami Dutiyam pisangam saranam gachami Tatiyam pibuddham saranam gachami Tatiyam pidamang saranam gachami Tatiyam pisangam saranam gachami Hanati pata veramani 
Sika padam samadhyami Adinna dana veramani Sika padam samadhyami Kame sumitcha chara veramani Sika padam Samadhyami Musawada Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami Surameraya Matcha Pamadatana Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami Iti piso bhagava arahan Samma sambuddho vijja Charana sampanno sugato loka vidu Anuttaro purisa dhamma sarati Sattva deva manu sanam buddho bhagavati Sakato bhagavata dhamma Sandittiko akaliko Ehi pastiko opanaiko pachatang veditabbo vinyuhiti Sopati panno bhagavato savaka sango Ujupati panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya Pati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Samichi Pati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Yadidang Chat Tari purisa yugani Atta purisa pukgala Esa bhagavato savaka sango Ahuneyo pahuneyo Dakineyo anjali karaniyo Anutarang punya ketang lokasati Bandami ceti yang sabang Sabtane supatit titang Sari rikadatu maha boding But Darupang sakalang sada Yasamule ni sinnova Sabbari bijayang aka Patto sabbanyuktang satta Bandetang bodhipadapang Ime ete mahabodhi Loka na te na pujita Aham ti te na masami Bodhi raja na matute Gana sarap padit te na Di pe na tamadang sina Ti loka di pang sambut dang Puja yami tamu nudang Ganda sambara yute na Dupe na hang sugandina Puja ye puja niyang tang 
Suvacho chasa mudo anati mani. Santosako chasubarocha. Apakicho chasalla huka wuti. Santin rio chanipakocha. Apagapo kule su ananu gido. Nachakut dang sama chari kinchi. Ye na vinyo pare upavate yung sukino va ke mino hontu sape satta bawan tu sukitatta ye ke chipana putati tasava tava rava anavasesa digava ye mahantava Majima rasa kanu katula, ditawa ye wa aditha, ye cedure wa santi api dure, butawa sambabe siwa, sape satta bawan tu sukitatta, naparo param nikup beta. Na ti manye ta kat ta chinam kan chi. Biaro sana patika sanya. Nanya manya seduk kami cheya. Mata ya ta ni yang putang. Ayusa e kaputta manu rakhe. E wampi sababu te su. Mana sang bawa ye apa rimanang, metan cesap balu kasming. Mana sang bawa ye apa rimanang, udang ado cetirian ce, asang badang averang asapatang, titang caram nisin nova. Saya nova ya batas sabi kata mido, etang satim adit teya, rahma me tang biharang ida mahu, ditin ce anu pegam masih lava, dasene na sampano, kami suvine ya gedang, na hija tu kap. Pasayang unare ti ti. Ete na satcha vajje na. Suti te ho tu sapada. Ete na satcha vajje na. Suti te ho tu sapada. Ete na satcha vajje na. Suti te ho tu sapada. By this declaration of the truth, may you be saved at all times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much, Sister Siu Fong, Sir May, and Sir Doris for today's Sunday Puja Chanting. Back with us this week to begin the new year, we have Brother Ling Huat to share on He Wants to Be Happy. Happy New Year 2024. Over to you, Brother Ling Huat. Thank you, thank you, Brother Evans. Thank you for hosting this Sunday Puja again. Yes, I have chosen the title of Happy New Year 2024. Uh, the reason is quite simple because normally uh, each time when we are invited to give a New Year message, we only are uh, located three to five minutes. Uh, uh, and I find it very short, very short for us to say what we want to say, correct? We don't need enough time. So it's enough time just to say that may this year bring you happiness, new goals, new achievement, many new inspiration to your life, wishing you a year of full of happiness, you know, and I hope this year will be the best year for you and may all your hopes be fulfilled and your dreams come true. I think that's about, that is about the time that you keep us now for three minutes. <laughs> so we're not able to express what you really want to say. So I've taken the liberty since the first Sunday 
I've taken the liberty to wish you all a very happy new year and to express my feelings to you all what I mean by happy new year. Huh? So I have more time this time, you know, I can explain to you what I mean by happy new year. There are many reasons, there are many reasons people send these new year messages. Uh, maybe one of the main reasons is to be polite, you know, and to be uh, friendly to, 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 to any wish your friends and relatives. Lah. It's more to be polite, lah, huh? to wish them Happy New Year. Uh, okay, and for employees and empl employers, of course, they wish this to the employees uh, to show their appreciation for what they have benefited last year. And they hope that you know, by this small inspiration they give you, they'll continue to enjoy and reap this kind of effort on you. Lah. Huh? So, so I have chosen this again, like I've said now, we, don't forget my main theme for the past six weeks is about happiness. Huh? I want to be happy. We all want to be happy. So I've taken this opportunity. Happy New Year to all of you out there. And when I say Happy New Year, what do I mean by Happy New Year? I have learned, you know, recently uh, over these this years of sharing with you all, all the Dhamma, uh, all the Dhamma that I know, I have learned something new that I have learned to notice that sometimes this happy new year thing has become just a greeting. You know? huh? I mean, sometimes many people may not mean what they say, but it's just a, a greeting. Hey, happy new year, happy new year, you know. So it becomes a greeting. So now I have resolved that I think I want to choose this topic to remind myself more than ever so to remind you all that we must really mean what we say when we say Happy New Year. Huh? Because the Buddha's advice about wanting long-lasting happiness to us, I have I covered this all. I'm just giving a summary of what I've spoken for the past six, uh, five weeks. Right, you know? So the Buddha's advice for us for wanting long-lasting happiness, the Buddha says this, how to bring this kind of highest happiness to us in this mundane world? The Buddha says is love and compassion. It's love and compassion and gratefulness that brings the highest degree of happiness. Correct? The highest degree of happiness we get from what? By expressing our compassion. Huh? So now, and we carry this love and compassion above all others. The moment we are born, why we say that compassion is important? Because the moment you are born, don't forget, huh? During the moment you are born, you are showered with plenty of love and compassion. Don't forget. Uh, your grandparents are there. Your mother will be cuddling you. Your father will be standing by the bedside. Your grandparents are there. Uh, so we're all showering lots of love to you. Right? So when they shower lots of love to you, so that is the beginning of your life. So that's why we say compassion and love is very, very critical for us. And also during the final stages of your life, we still need our friends to be with us, some, our family to be with us, our children to be with us this time. The children are there with us in, by our bedside. Maybe our close relatives, our spouses are there. Maybe our close friends are there. So you see, even the final stages of our life, don't forget, we still need this love and compassion. That is why the Buddha says it's love and compassion. Love and compassion and gratefulness being brings the highest degree of happiness. Uh, so you reflect on this. Is it true? Yeah, it is very true. Uh, because I'm sure when we are not well, we will love to see our children beside us. Uh, in, our, in, in our last days of our life, I'm sure it's nice to see your children beside you. Uh, last hour of your life, it's nice to see them. So that is why the Buddha says love, compassion, and gratefulness brings the highest degree of happiness. Huh? And the Buddha also say now that we must be able... So now, we, we value our, our, our family very much. So what do we do? We must be grateful to them for the support. Huh? So we must spend our time and money wisely. For this kind of festive, I like to stay home. I like to meet my, my, my family, my relatives, my friends coming to the home and we rejoice together. Enjoy the festivity together. I've always enjoyed that. And that was what actually the Buddha has advised and has spoken during the Sigalovada Sutta and the Diga Janu Sutta. The Buddha said it very, very clearly. 
when you have enough of savings, enough of money to spend with your family, you should be enough of money to spend, you should spend it with your family. Spend it with your parents, with your relatives and friends. And that is the meaning. That is gratefulness and compassion. Why? Why do we need to spend time with them? Because we must be grateful. The word here is again gratefulness. We must be grateful to them. We must be grateful for their support to us throughout our lives. How did we survive last year without the support? Of course, support was there. We made, that, that, that support has given us and, made, and, and given us a successful year. So we are grateful to them. Huh? So we are grateful to our relatives and friends who supported us the whole of last year. And remember, sometimes these relatives and friends, huh, because we must be grateful to them for their support, because it's not that they have supported us throughout our past life, you know, I, I mean, throughout the past year. It can be also through our past lives. Huh? It is because that we are connected somehow or other. We are connected and indebted to each other. That's why we are together again. Right? We are together again because in our past lives, we were connected. Somehow or rather, I am sure we are connected. So that's why we are together again and we are trying to help each other again. What we, what we know, we share with you, what you have, you have, you share with us, and that's how we make ourselves happy. Huh? But, but when we do this, remember, we're not doing this because we're indebted to our parents, you know, and we don't think that, oh, I paid you, I've done this to you. It is not possible. Huh? We do this in gratitude. We do things to our family, to our friends, not because to buy our tongue, you know. Don't think it's buy our tongue but it is out of gratefulness to them, out of love and gratefulness to them for having supported us all these years and maybe throughout our past life. We are grateful to them. So that's why we are rejoicing this festivity together with them. Huh? If you say you want to repay your parents, is it possible? It is not possible. Huh? The Buddha has addressed this very clearly in the Katanyu Sutta. You will not be able to repay your parents, even if you carry your father on your right shoulder, your mother on your left shoulder for 100 years, and let them do whatever they want to do, do their business on your shoulder, you clean them, you wash them, you feed them, cannot repay them. It is not possible to repay your parents. They are your first bodhisattvas of your life. They were the first to teach you the law of karma. They tell you to be nice and good. People will love you. Correct? They told you not to do wrong things. People won't like you. you see? So they were the first bodhisattvas in our life. So it's impossible to repay them. One way, the Buddha says, is to lead them the proper way. To lead them to learn the Dhamma, to lead them to the temple, to learn the Dhamma, to change their lifestyle, maybe. Like what we mean here is they, they must be ethically right, morally right, in case we have got slips here and there in life. So we bring them to temple, and that is the way to repay them. That's what the Buddha says. Huh? In the Katanya Sutta, the Buddha says that it is impossible to, 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 to repay your parents. Okay, so don't think that what little we do for them today, we enjoy ourselves, we are young, sing together, reunion and dinner, we have paid them. No, it's not possible. But we are expressing our gratitude to them. We are expressing our gratitude. We cannot repay them. Okay? So, so this is the message that I want to do, to, I want to share. And also, and also sometimes, huh? I too wish to motivate you all, you know, since, since you know, the employers have to motivate their, 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 their employees. I like to motivate my friends. When we together, we motivate each other. Uh, so we learn the Buddha Dhamma, you know. That is why I'm here to share with you. And I hope that you will come up and share with you. We prepare this platform for you all to come to share. Share the Dhamma together here. This platform, like I've said it before, it is for beginners, like people who want to... Uh, do their sharing for the first time, come to this platform and, and explore. Huh? And we hope that we, we, will, we will make you a very good Dhamma speaker one day lah, through this platform that we are organizing every Sunday. Yeah? So now, 
We want our people here. We want, I want to do that. I want to put my Buddha Dharma to practice. For what? For my own continued happiness. Correct? Because the Buddha says, for me to be happy, happy should be happy new year, happy new year. That is why. That is for me to be happy. When I create a happy society, the Buddha says, when you can create a happy society, that is happiness to you. Happiness to you is to be able to see the happy people around you. Right? Like I have given an example before. Like you go to a wake service, everybody so solemn there. How can you be happy there? You cannot be shouting there and enjoy yourself. Right? But when you go for a celebration, a birthday party, a wedding dinner, everybody is rejoicing that that part, the birthday or rejoicing that wedding. Everybody's congratulations, congratulations. And that is the happy atmosphere. So that's why you see the surrounding must be happy. Then you can be happy, the Buddha says. So that's why we must create society that is happy so when we say happy new year and we say happy new year to a toddler of course toddlers come to the house you know i do not know my our culture here in malaika pranakan people we will visit each other the chinese we are the chinese culture right? basically like we all will visit each other and we wish everybody happy new year you know in our own traditional way lah, huh? so when we we say when, when when a young toddler comes and tell me happy new year i say yes happy new year but i must mean something not just happy new year what i mean now is i put meaning into the happy new year huh? meaning which i must put to practice meaning to say that i hope that you will be free from hunger right and you will be blessed with lots of love from your parents you have a beautiful a beautiful set of parents and you will be free from hunger because when you reflect huh, those children in the, in africa there are many children who are actually very hungry, you know. Huh? You reflect back on what is happening to the Palestine. You see many children are hungry there. Many babies are also hungry there huh? with no proper food. And the mothers themselves are undernourished. You know? So we say Happy New Year to this young daughter. We hope that you won't be in that kind of situation. Huh? So we must reflect like that. Oh, happy New Year. So we hope that you will be free from all this hunger, free from all these kind of disturbances in life. In the sense, then when we see a college going child, we say, Happy New Year, young man. Happy New Year, young lady. We say what we, we must say that we reflect at that. We hope that your studies will not be interrupted. Uh, we were lucky, you know, when we were young, our studies were not interrupted. I don't remember any at any time I cannot go to school. Correct. You know, I was never hampered by the by 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 by, by flood. Neither was I hampered by the COVID those days or another war. Uh, we were all we were free from all these encumbrances before, you know. Uh, but today we notice that our our studies were also hampered a bit now. during the COVID. Many cannot go to school. Look at the Palestine. Everything was damaged. Look at Africa, they can't even find food, what top bottom. Why talk about education when they cannot live for today? So, so these are the encumbrances they need, you know, the difficulty, the hindrances in life. So when we say young man, we say happy new year. So we hope that they will be free from all these kind of things. Huh? That their education will not be disturbed. We hope that their education will not be interrupted. Huh? That is the purpose of us saying happy new year. Lah. Huh? Okay. So when we talk about gratitude, you know, I have, I have, okay, so that's why when we wish things like that, because we want that, we wish with the meaning, with the purpose. Lah. Huh? Of course, we don't have that kind of words to tell to people, but we must reflect, lah. we must reflect and hope. Lah. So when we meet career people, when we meet career people, we wish them also, you know, happy new year. So what we are saying is we wish that your career will be successful. We wish that your career will be successful and that you may earn your living through morally and ethically right means, right? Uh, we hope that you are able to earn your money morally and ethically right manner, in a morally and ethically right manner. It's Samma Ajivo, right livelihood. We hope that you can have right livelihood today. May you have that kind of opportunity lah, where we don't have to do bad things to earn a living. Uh, we were all blessed before. We had good jobs, you know, no interruption, like I've said, you know, 
So we don't have to go stealing for food, nothing. We just have to work hard, there is food. Uh, we hope that you will have you will be in that situation also. Lah. Don't say free food, lah. free food impossible. Lah. So you work hard. Don't forget the Buddha says put effort. Uh, Sama vaya mo. Right effort. Uh, that is important. Put in the right effort, right means of earning the right money. So when you have this, this is what the Buddha says. This is ati, ati sukha. I'm repeating again now. This is called ati sukha. So that you are blessed with the opportunity to earn your wealth by just and righteous means. That is ati sukha. Then when you have these proper savings, after when you have worked, or let's say at the end of the year, come Chinese New Year, come to this New Year, you want to have fast, you want to have celebration with our family. So we hope that we have proper savings, huh? Proper savings, and we must spend it wisely. Another advice by the Buddha in the Diga Janu Sutta, in the Sigalovada Sutta, spend your money wisely. Among that way is the Buddha says you spend it with your family and friends and do some charity. Huh? You must be able to afford to do some charity. So then when you have this money. Then you have a celebration at home. Don't forget your loved ones. They are the ones. So some people during this opportunity, they take leave and go on holidays, you know. Yeah, fine, good. You still go with your family, lah. fine. Huh? But even better if you can live with an extended family. During this festive, stay back and, and extend that kind of, let us rejoice together. Lah. An extended family, like all about your uncles, your cousins. Let's all meet together once a year. Let us enjoy ourselves. Yeah? So during this festive, we hope that we have proper money, proper savings, and we can enjoy the company of our family. Huh? Because we, the message here is because we are again grateful to them. We are always grateful to our friends, our relatives, our family, right? Because somehow or other we are connected not only in this life, in the previous lives also we were connected. That's why we are together again. And that gratefulness is one of the most important qualities to me. As a Buddhist, one must be grateful. The Buddha says, if you are ungrateful, you are not reliable. That is in the Katanyu Sutta again. If you are ungrateful, you are not reliable. The Buddha himself was very grateful when he was enlightened. When the Buddha was enlightened, remember the first week of enlightenment, what did the Buddha do? The Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree and experienced the bliss of emancipation. It was the first week. The second week, what did the Buddha do? He stood up, moved away from his seat, walked a few feet away. And gaze at the Bodhi tree for one week in gratefulness. In gratefulness that the tree has protected him during his search for enlightenment. The tree has protected him from the sun and the rain, from the weather in short. He was very grateful. He was gazing at the tree and feeling grateful. He was also reflecting on all his teachers, all his friends, all his relatives who has helped him along the way huh? during his lifetime his, 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 his 29 years of living in a palace he was grateful to all those people there also then during his search for enlightenment six years in the forest he was also grateful to many teachers to, to most of the two most important teachers and other teachers which, which we, we, we do not read it in the books but i'm sure he has met a lot of people who has taught him but the two great teachers Alala Karama. And, 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 and Ramaputta. Huh? So he, he reflected on them, expressing his gratitude to these teachers and to his friends who have supported him during the six years. He did not forget them. He did not forget them. He was also thinking if he should, he need to, when he, not should he, when he goes out, to share his Dhamma, who are the people who would qualify to act, to learn from him, who can uh, have the wisdom to understand his teaching. 
So he was reflecting on all this out of gratitude. The Buddha was a very grateful person. So that, that's why I always say gratefulness is a very important quality of a Buddhist. If you are ungrateful, you are not reliable. That's what the Buddha says. Ungrateful people are not reliable. Grateful people can be trusted. Yeah? So that is what we are doing. We are taking the advice of the Buddha. We have a celebration and we enjoy with our family and friends. Yeah, what little savings that we have, whatever little we can allocate for that celebration, we must rejoice together. That is the purpose. Huh? Huh? And that is what we call the happiness to use that money lah, and well to your friends. Huh? And also to give some dana to some temples or to the monks or to any orphanage that you know of. You must do charity also. Huh? And that is what the Buddha says. The second kind of happiness is called the boga. Boga sukha. Huh? That is the happiness of sharing. Right? So we will again now. So remember, it is good for us to have a small uh, festive in the house with our family and friends. Huh? Open house line, in short, lah, come and have also a bit of, well, go ahead, whatever we want to serve them, lah. let us rejoice together on this kind of festival to reflect our gratitude. You know, we must think that when I wish you Happy New Year, I'm grateful to you, you have supported me through my life. Correct? And let's rejoice together. Huh? Ah, so that is the purpose of this kind of New Year. Lah. So when we say Happy New Year, we hope that we can meet together and share these festivities together. Huh? So that we are saying that we are expressing our gratitude to each other. Somehow or other you help me, somehow or other I help you, let us rejoice. Huh? So this is how we spend money and friends to our, 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 our money to our relatives and friends. Don't forget this is called a bogus, a bogus super. Huh? No, sometimes I, I, I wish to tell you a story also. <laughs> I, I, I have a friend. Huh? When we were very much younger, when his children were all school going, you know. So every year on the eve of New Year, uh, he works in KL, but roots are in Malacca, so he comes back to Malacca on the New Year's Eve and then have his family dinner. And then he'll come and tell me, oh, and then he'll come and visit me, of course, like every year without fail, he comes to see me. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine. And I always remember he'll tell me, oh, you know what, tomorrow uh, I'm taking my family for holidays, I'm going to Thailand. Sometimes, she says, oh, I'm going to Taiwan, oh, I'm going to Vietnam, oh, I'm going every Chinese New Year. He comes on the eve, he tells me the next day he's flying off for holidays. Lah. Every year he tells me that. So people ask me, where are you going? I say, no, I don't go anywhere. New Year means I stay home. I, I will welcome all my relatives to the house. So now, that was his tone last time. Lah. Every in the eve he tells me, oh, then what? tomorrow I'm going here, then what? I'm flying off here, then what? I'm going there, then what? I'm going to my family, you know, every year, you know. Then, when the children have grown a little bit more, when they become young men and career people, this friend of mine came to see me again. Huh? When the children were very much bigger and more independent. Huh? Say, what? No, what? My children already told me, you know, they book holidays for Chinese New Year, so they won't be spending time with me. You know? So, you see what happened? You taught them, <laughs> isn't it? We, we, that was leadership by example. We taught them, uh, have the holiday, go for this, go for this. We, didn't train them to spend, we also didn't show them that we want to spend time with our parents last time. So they tell you like, oh, oh daddy, this new year, he told me, he came, they didn't want, you know, huh? my children told me, huh? well, this new year, I won't be home with my dad, huh? I'm, I'm going out, I'm going here, I'm going there. You see, one month earlier, they booked me and they told me they're going away, you know, oh, your new year will be very lonely. Lah. You see, so that is, that is the effect, lah. cause and effect, isn't it? Because you did not spend time with your parents, your children are so brought up that way. They also need want to spend time with you. Lah. So I always advocate that I always advocate that we must spend time with our relatives and friends during the Chinese New Year and during any festival. Don't take that as an opportunity to go away. Lah. There are many other times you can go and leave. Correct? Right? So so that is what I'm trying to tell you today. Lah, huh? We must spend time because that is what the Buddha says, Boga spending time with family and friends. Huh? That is, when I say Happy New Year to the people, it's because of this. Huh? And also sometimes we wish, when we see old people, uh, old people like me, uh, you know, retirees, and we say Happy New Year, Uncle. 
we hope that they're living free from debts lah. We are saying lah. We hope that your life is free from debts. You know, at this age, we don't worry too much about how to pay bills anymore lah. We hope that we have enough savings by then. We we, we earn our our life view correctly. We earn and we spend the money accordingly to what we can afford during the festive. Boga suka now the third level. We must also make sure that we are debtless. We don't worry about our bills in of the year. Huh? Some people like it that way lah. When they retire, they still have, some. Not that they like lah. Some people even when they retire, they still have bills to pay lah. They still have installments that they can do lah. Huh? But some don't have lah. So this is what I'm saying lah. So we hope that you are free from debts when you retire. When we say, "Oh my uncle, happy new year, uncle," what we are saying is, "I hope you are free from debts, free from all these kind of." Bills every month. That is called anana soup. The Buddha says that is called anana soup. So we are wishing you that that you old people don't worry so much. I hope you don't have worries for bills, lah. Huh? You know. Ah, so that is what we say, lah. So we must reflect all this for the new year, lah. Huh? So time to spend money. We must not reflect that we are paying our tongue obligation again. Like I said. We are just merely expressing, you know, expressing our 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 gratitude, ah, huh? and then sometimes, ah, huh, we also hope that when we see even people who are very much older than us, you know, and we hope that when we say Happy New Year, Uncle, Happy New Year, Uncle, Happy New Year, Uncle. If I call somebody Uncle, means that somebody is very much older than me, lah. So I hope that that Uncle. Is also free from blamelessness, lah. He's not worried for anything, not worried for people knocking on the door anywhere. You know that I hope the uncle doesn't have this kind of. He has not done anything bad during the younger days to earn this money and worried of being being being. Don't worry about the law catching up with him, lah. So this is what we call blamelessness. We say, uncle, we hope that you are blameless, lah. We hope that you can enjoy another just. It's called Anna Vajjasu. So we hope, Uncle, you can enjoy this kind of life, lah. We hope that your life is spotless and pure, and without committing any evil thoughts, words, and deeds in your earlier life, so we can retire well. You notice there are some people who cannot retire. I'm sure many of you have noticed people whom I will call Uncle, who is very much older than me. You know, you know, people who cannot retire even at the very advanced age. Still involved in business, still involved in politics, cannot retire. Huh? So this we hope don't happen to us also. So we say good uh, happy new year, uncle. We hope that uncle you are free from debt, uncle. You are free from anna vajjasuka, free from all these blameless, all these blames, and you are free from all this. So these are the four kinds of happiness we wish you. And we say happy new year. We must be sincere. Not just Happy New Year for the sake as a greeting. You know. Sometimes I also notice lah. Like, I also do it as a greeting. Hey, Happy New Year, brother! Happy New Year, brother! You know. Ah, huh? so no. I think, I think now we have to reflect lah. Huh? So okay, having said all this, ah, huh, you can enjoy all this kind of nice, these four happiness that we have earned. Correct. You must earn these four happiness. You know, ah, huh? it doesn't come for free. Ah, huh? you earn this happiness. Above this happiness, what is important? Happy New Year, Uncle. Happy New Year, children. Happy New Year, everybody. Is your health, correct? Then we will say even the babies. We wish you good health. College going people, we say good health. To the uncles and my contemporary, good health. To uncles and uncles, also good health. Because without good health. This is physical happiness. I was once asked, "What is physical happiness?" And this is physical happiness. Your health. Somebody asked me before, "What is physical happiness?" I yes, your health. Without this physical happiness, you can't enjoy this four happiness. Don't forget, your health is of utmost importance. Ah, uh, so don't think that this is not important. So. Now we can visit Dhamma Pada verse two zero four. What did the Buddha says? Arogya Parma Laba, which means health is the highest gain. Santutti Paramang Dhanang, Santutti Paramang Dhanang, 
That means the Buddha says contentment is the greatest wealth. Your mental well-being, you know, these four happiness are your mental well-being. Right? This is your mental well-being. So this is contentment is our greatest wealth. Right? Don't worry about too much wealth you have. This four happiness you have, this is contentment. This is what we call mental happiness. Okay, so the Buddha says, Santuti Paramang Danang. Contentment is your greatest wealth. Okay, and again the Buddha says, Visasa Paramanyati. Visasa, pa, visasa Paramanyati. The trusted ones are your best relatives. Social well being. Uh, the trusted ones are your best relatives. So have have them for a new year. Uh, spend time with them in gratefulness for this. Uh, you must be grateful that you have them as friends, you know. Correct. And last, the Buddha says, Nibbanang. Nibbanang paramang sukang. Nibbanang paramang sukang. Meaning, Nibbana is the highest bliss. That is spiritual well being. So remember, whatever happiness we talk about, this four happiness or any happiness, above all this, for us to enjoy is your physical happiness. And what is this physical happiness? Somebody has asked me, and here I will answer to you, that physical happiness is your health. All right? Without health, the Buddha says, you cannot enjoy all these four happiness that you have earned. You cannot enjoy your, retire your, your, retirement, your, your retirement period when you are not well. All right? You cannot have parties in the house when you're not well. Huh? You cannot wish people a happy new year full-heartedly when you're not well. So remember, visit Dhammapada verse 204, Arogya Parama Labha Santutti Paramang Danang Visasa Parama Nyati Nibbanang Paramang Sukang Health is the highest gain or highest bliss, contentment is the greatest wealth, that's your mental well-being, the, the trusted are your best relatives, that's your social well-being, and Nibbana, the highest bliss, that is your spiritual well-being. Yeah? So here we can visualize that the Buddhist principles can play a vital role. Right? Buddhist principles are very simple, non-toxic, and it promotes happiness with a sustainable environment. It's non-toxic environment becomes very sustainable. Be happy is very easy. Visit the Dhammapada as your physical health and this for happiness. Huh? And we realize that this is the happiness that the Buddha is preaching to us as lay people. Okay? And this is non-toxic and is very suitable for a sustainable environment. So with that, my greeting to you is a bit long this year. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. And may I wish you again a very happy new year. May health be with you always for you to enjoy this four bliss. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Very much for running hard for this gentle reminder. It's indeed a very good reflection for the coming year. So now let's dedicate some merits or oh, gratitude to all our departed relatives who may be in the heavenly realms. Akasata chabumma ta dewa naga mahitika punyang tamano modit wa chiram rakan tu loka sa sanang eta wata cha amhehi sampadang punya sampadang sabbe dewa sabbe buta sabbe sata no modantu sabba sampati sit dia. Idang me nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. 
Idang me nya ti nang ho tu su di ta ho tu nya ta yo. Idang me nya ti nang ho tu su di ta ho tu nya ta yo. And aspirations. Imina punya kame na ma me balasamagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu yavani bana patia. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you everyone for watching. For other videos, please visit the links below. Bye bye for now. See you all again next week.